Hello, welcome to Kingston Episcopal Parish's worship service for this Sunday, March 14th. This is the fourth Sunday of Lent, the Sunday we sometimes think of as a sort of lessening of the Lenten discipline um, and a time when we take just a little break, a, a mid-stride uh, breather before we uh, prepare for the last uh, climb <clears throat> towards Golgotha, and then, of course, finally, the empty tomb. Um, we welcome you. Welcome all who might be with us today. Welcome in the name and the love of our Lord Jesus. A um, <clears throat> couple of other announcements before we actually begin worship. Um, we continue with our, our many programs on online. Um, we have our adult education program, uh, which is on our Facebook page, and I can also send it to you by email if you ask for it. Um, and then we gather on Zoom on Monday afternoons at 4 p.m. for a discussion. And we have um, just two more classes left before Holy Week, and then we'll take a break. Um, so. If you would like to do that, um, uh, let us know or check out the Facebook page. Uh, it is there. Um, we continue also with our, our Zoom coffee hour every Sunday morning at 1130. And we also um, have a, a program for our children, uh, which is by Zoom on Sunday mornings at 1030. Um, if you have children or our children who would like to be a part of that, we would glad be glad to welcome you all and um, just call the office or let us know somehow, and we will be sure to include you. Um, the uh, pandemic continues, but there are more and more of us who are able to get the vaccine. Uh, there is a special vaccine um, program available this next week, uh, and uh, you can read about it in the newspaper um, and try and find your way with that. Uh, you can also, if you haven't yet registered with the Three Rivers Health District and with the state, really is the way we do it now. Um, it, that's really easy to do by phone or online. And it's important to go ahead and do that as soon as you can. Because um, <clears throat> I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we may be able to start getting together outdoors before too long. And then uh, maybe not too long after that, we'll be able to gather indoors. I think for the foreseeable future, we'll still be wearing masks and not able to get closer than six feet to each other, but we will at least be in the same place. Um, uh, something to look forward to. Um, uh, I think that maybe all of that, we, of course, for Lent, we are continuing our wonderful Lenten programs that are at the labyrinth. If you haven't been to the community labyrinth, especially now when we, we can't gather indoors, we can uh, walk the labyrinth. And um, our own Marianne Carr has written some beautiful uh, meditations to go with the labyrinth, and she's offering a different meditation each week through Lent. So uh, take, take some time and, and walk our labyrinth, uh, an ancient tool for prayer um, uh, and a gift from our parish to the community. So invite everyone in the community to come and walk it if they would like, especially in these days as we begin to, to be able to celebrate spring. Um, we have some birthdays this week to celebrate. Um, on uh, March 15th, we celebrate Donna Jemison and Vivian Quinlan. And on March 17th, we not only celebrate St. Patrick, 
but we also celebrate Carrie Poe and Beatty May. Happy birthday to each of you all, and I would ask all of you to join me in the birthday prayer. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead and begin our worship.
Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread, which giveth life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. A reading from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, 
following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Just, Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son to the end that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today we have what is probably the most well-known piece of Scripture that there is. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. People have it tattooed on them. It is uh, on embroidered on people's pillows. It is everywhere everywhere. And yet, most of us don't know the context of that little uh, bit of scripture, and especially the words that, that Jesus offers right before this passage, where he brings up this obscure passage from the book of Numbers and talks about a serpent being lifted up, and that he himself is going to be lifted up like the serpent. Of all things, for Jesus to compare himself to a snake, especially since in Scripture, of course, the first snake we know is the one in Eden. 
to have Jesus compare himself to the one who helps lead us astray. And yet, of course, Jesus is saying he is the salvation. He is the snake that is going to bring life. So what is Jesus talking about? Where, where is this passage in Torah, in Numbers, about snakes? And we heard it this morning, just a few minutes ago. Um, and it's a passage where the people, the Hebrew slaves of Egypt have been set free. They have crossed the Red Sea. They are in the wilderness for 40 years waiting for the chance to get to the promised land. And they're complaining that there is no food and water, even as God offers them food. And so then they complain that the food isn't good enough. Water is brought, struck from the very rocks around them. They have what they need, including a new freedom and a hope for a better life in a promised land ahead is they will only discover the way to have a deep, full relationship with God in the wilderness so that they can get to the promised land and know the way. But they whine and whine and complain and complain. And in one of uh, the ways people experience what is happening is that God seems to even send poisonous snakes among the people because of all their whining. Now, of course, we would not say God is sending poisonous snakes. There are poisonous snakes. And if you're in the wilderness, you just may come across one. And if it bites you, you just might die. Um, especially in those days long before ambulances and, and uh, anti-venom and all of the things we have in our day. Um, and so uh, there is this great fear among the people that they have whined so much and complained about even what is possibly good for them that that they are being punished. And, and Moses goes to God and says, so, so what do we do for these people? And God says, of all the strange things, create a sort of idol, a bronze image of a poisonous snake. And then let people look at it if they've been bitten by a snake and, and I will heal them. They will not die. Strange, strange passage with all sorts of strange ideas because, of course, the last time anybody made a, an image of bronze and brass, uh, that was the golden calf. Uh, and it, it was an idol. Uh, it was a terrible thing that separated people from God. And yet somehow this, this image of the snake is supposed to help people. And it evidently works. For generations, that uh, bronze uh, snake is held up. Even after the temple is built, it, it's got a special little corner in the temple of God where people go. And eventually a little cult uh, of people sort of uh, get so excited about this this statue that uh, eventually the, the powers that be decide they got to get rid of this idol because it is now getting in the way of God. But that's the story that Jesus remembers when he speaks to us about his being lifted up on the cross that somehow his saving power by being lifted up in front of us 
will save us. And it's not just a magical thing at all. It's not, of course, even just that he dies to take away our sins. It is partially him showing us the kind of love that if we can live, will change the world and change us. A love that is so self-giving, that is so healing and powerful, that it takes away all the whining, it moves past all of the darkness into a light. And so in the John's Gospel, we hear that so many people choose against Jesus, choose against eating the manna that is there to feed them in the desert, choose against all the good that God gives us because they want to be in control. And, and in John's Gospel they say because we love darkness of all things. We would prefer to be in that place where we can be in control, which has to be darkness. Because when you stand in the light and are really honest, you discover how little control you really have and how much you must depend on other people and on a God who is ready to care for us and who loves us more than we can imagine, loves us even to death on the cross and loves us even beyond that into a new beginning. Where is there still darkness that you are holding on to? Where have you and I whined about pandemic or about something we don't like at church or about our government or about getting old. Uh, who knows? We can always find something to whine about, can't we? And yet, instead to be grateful for the life we are given. Be grateful for a community of faith which is far from perfect, but which is the church where we meet God and where we meet God in each other. Maybe sometimes in the people we're not comfortable with. We live in a place and time with its own challenges and we can whine about it or we can live in the joy of all the good things that we have. These spring days, I don't know about you, but it would be easy enough to whine about the fact that you never know whether it's going to be freezing or beautiful each day. And we could go back to February when it rained and was icy every day, and at least we would know what to expect. We could love the darkness. But what we have is something so much more beautiful, if not something we can always predict. And so it is with God. So it is. This God who can even tell Moses to make a statue of a snake. What a strange God we have some days. A God who is willing to die on a cross. A God who has created a universe so that we are on this tiny rocky ball in the middle of nowhere going around a great fiery ball that is the sun. There is so much that is strange about God. And we can complain about that. We can complain that God brings us freedom in ways 
that are not automatically fulfilling. Just as he brought the slaves out of Egypt, but then into the wilderness for 40 years before they could reach the promised land because they needed time to process and grow and change and move out of their slavery. We so often want a quick fix and we are willing to walk into the darkness where we think the fix is faster. This story reminds us we have to stand back and wait and watch as even God, our Lord Jesus, is raised in hatred and, and vile violence onto a cross so that we might have life. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't automatically make my life and your life easy. And yet, it is the way to the promised land. It is the way to be redeemed, saved, healed, made whole, to find life. Join me and let us affirm our faith together using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in your copy of your bulletin. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, and Gary, our priest, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, 
and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, and Ralph, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor our parishioners, Jim, Hank, Paul, Nina, Peggy, Martha, Ron, Cheryl, Rachel, Tom, Dick, Adele, Ginger, Mary Ellen, Will, Jim, and Larry. For all those who have no one to say their name in prayer, for our family and friends commended to prayer, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We lift into your protection the men and women serving in our armed forces and in the diplomatic corps at home and abroad, especially those commended to our prayers. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Your own prayers and thanksgivings may be offered at this time. Grant these prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against Thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved You with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways. To the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I love thee in all things and above all things. I long to be with thee, my beloved. I hunger to be with my loving church family and all the faithful across time and space in thy heavenly feast. But on this day I cannot be present to receive thee in the bread and the wine as I wish. Yet I know thou canst be present to me in ways beyond my understanding and across time and space, incarnate and eternal. I ask that thou feedest me in these holy mysteries and fill me with thy sacramental presence. May we know thee in the breaking of the bread and receive thee into our broken lives and be made whole. May thy Holy Spirit nourish us, comfort us, challenge us. Grant us a place at thy heavenly table where we shall eat of eternal bread and drink of the river of thy pleasure forevermore. May we be one as thee and the Father are one. Make thy home be in my home, thy altar at my table, thy love in my heart given to thee. Fill me with thy spirit, that my hunger for thee, thy loving justice, and thy healing salvation may grow. And send me forth hungry, to make thee present in all the world. I give myself to thee, dear friend, even as best I can, even as thou gavest thyself to me. In thy life, thy death in all creation, and thy creating me, in the bread and the wine made body and blood, and in thy resurrection. May my love be thy love, my joy be thy joy, and my life be thy life, this day and forevermore. Amen. Go forth now into the wilderness, where the Spirit drives each of us in baptism. Go forth to be tempted by Satan and cared for by the angels. Go forth to serve the needy and to discover thy need. Go forth to carry thy cross and follow. Go forth in the humility of God's suffering and the glory of God's love that overwhelms all suffering. Go forth to be God's love in the broken world. Go forth to forgive as Christ Jesus forgives thee and forgave even on the cross. Go forth by the strength of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.